Hey viewers, this is A to Z Customs. Today I got an issue with my Ford Ranger. Basically the RPMs are having difficulty going above 2000 when I'm driving and then when I cut the vehicle on, it, if I don't hit the gas, then the RPMs will die and the car will cut off. So I'm gonna show you how to basically diagnose an air issue with similar symptoms to that. I'm gonna do a few different things to see if I can fix this issue and I'm gonna show y'all how to do it. I hope y'all are doing okay during this coronavirus epidemic. Uh, if you're working on your vehicles right now and you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I'm gonna be posting a lot more videos on different things with trucks and other vehicles that I'll be working on over the next couple weeks. So with air issues, there's not too many things it could be. Sometimes you got an issue with the mass airflow sensor this mass airflow sensor is newer however i've noticed this truck pretty much yearly whenever it gets warm i live in north carolina we have a lot of pollen and when it warms up during the spring we get so much pollen that sometimes the stuff gets sucked in through the air ducts and will either coat the mass airflow sensor a little bit or oh, just over time the idle control valve, which is located right here on this Ranger, will get clogged up. That's more a carbon issue. And then the throttle body plate in here, the butterfly valves, they will be get coated with grime and they will basically, they will basically have trouble opening and closing. So I'm strongly suspecting it's that, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull off this air duct and find out. All right, so I'm finding I got a, might have an additional issue here, probably unrelated to my idle, but potentially it is. I got some transmission fluid in the throttle body. I've heard of this issue before. I can't remember off the top of my head what causes it, but that'll be something I'll have to look at later. So basically at this point, I've just popped off the intake, uh, the intake hose, and just really looking around the throttle body doesn't look like it has much grime on it at all which is a good thing because if it did then what i'd do is i'd basically pop it off let's see let's get in there no nah, no grime at all so what i do is i just take the throttle body off and clean it out with some carb cleaner but next thing we're gonna do here in a minute so we're gonna go ahead and pop off the idle control valve, which is this right here. Idle control valve in these vehicles is really easy to remove. It's only got two bolts, one here and one here. All right, so our idle control valve looks great. I mean, really, it still looks pretty dang new, to be honest with you. I replaced this maybe a few years ago now, and you see there's no grime in it or anything. It looks great, so that's not the issue. Now, another really common cause of an idling issue is this hose right below the throttle body. This elbow, this really frequently cracks on Ford Rangers and it'll cause some serious idling issues if, <clears throat> if it's cracked or sometimes it even gets disconnected from the throttle body. It actually runs all the way around, all the way around here to this pump down here. So take a look at that, see if it's got some serious cracks in that elbow right there. Mine's in good condition. That's not what's causing my issue. So now after taking this plastic cover off, which just, just had two eight millimeters here and here, taking a look at the throttle body. It looks okay. It looks to be working just fine. These cables seem a little loose, but... <clears throat> Another common issue with air issues on these vehicles is you've got this tree right here. <clears throat> coming off of your air intake and you see I've rigged this thing up these hoses didn't come stock on this truck I put those hoses on and zip ties and such 
Well, a lot of the times these hoses, as they get older, they'll actually, actually, uh, actually shoot off of this branch, and that'll cause a massive, massive vacuum leak on these vehicles. So you can take a look at that as well. Make sure those hoses are tight. Okay, so I just pulled off the mass airflow sensor. It's really easy to do. That's why I didn't show how to do it. There's four bolts in the uh, on either end on each corner and instead you don't actually have to do that you can so this mass airflow sensor has been replaced and it's got two phillips head screws on the top so you can see that one's stripped though so i went ahead and took the whole thing off and if you can see it the mass airflow sensor is actually in that small hole uh but behind this grating back there so that's where the actual sensor is like i said it frequently it gets coated with crap and the way to clean these things is to use some mass airflow sensor it's like 10 bucks i think at the auto store and you basically just spritz it if you've been able to take the sensor off then you spritz the 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 sensor and make sure you don't actually touch that sensor and you want to give it a few minutes for it to dry it's quick dry so it only takes a few minutes before you install it again so that's what i'm gonna go ahead and do now okay so i've been digging a little more into the weeds here uh, trying to because i'm doubting that that mass airflow sensor which isn't that old was causing the idling issue and i looked up I, I was curious to go ahead and look up that transmission fluid issue and it's highly likely that my modulator has gone out uh, the tra automatic transmission vacuum modulator and some of the symptoms that that will cause are bad or bad um, bad idling it'll cause transmission fluid to go up through the vacuum line from the modulator and end up in an intake which as you can clearly see here that red fluid and then another sign is there's actually a vacuum line that runs from that modulator all the way up to the intake and that line is this metal line right here that ends in this rubber piece so you can take a q-tip stick it up there take a look and as you can see I've got some red on that q-tip which tells me that I've probably got a bad vacuum modulator and that may very well be the issue and as you can see there is as another little tidbit the air filter looks good so with that in mind I'm probably gonna make another video detailing the vacuum modulator replacement. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna expand this video too much but what you've seen here is basically some basic things you can do if you've got a rough idle, if you've got some RPMs, some RPM issues, and basically really figure out what's going on. So cleaning the mass airflow sensor, cleaning the idle control valve, taking a look at your butterfly valve on the throttle body, and then looking at that elbow underneath here to see if that's in decent condition. And then also checking out this tree right here to see if the hoses are attached correctly. You do all that, uh, that's basically your basic easy maintenance, basic easy ways to fix, a, fix an idling issue. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Y'all have a good one.